As the Public Service Alliance and Federal Treasury Board move to solidify a tentative deal with the striking Public Service Alliance of Canada, the agreement only came to fruition after a thinly veiled threat issued by the Government of Canada. To be clear, the Canada Revenue Agency continues their strike action and is even calling for community allies and other unions to welcome the federal Liberals at their convention May 4th to 6th at the Shaw Centre in Ottawa. But back to the Public Service Alliance of Canada strike, on April 27th, Public Services and Procurement Canada published a statement that said the government of Canada would like to clarify information regarding employees' pay in the context of the current labour disruption by the Public Service Alliance of Canada, or PSAC. A statement issued by the Public Services and Procurement Canada stated on April 27th. It went on to say that employees on strike are considered to be on leave without pay and will not be paid for the time they are participating in strike activity. Since the strike began on April 19th and the federal public servants are paid two weeks in arrears, employees who choose to strike will see a reduction in pay as early as their May 10th paycheck. The Government of Canada is committed to processing all pay transactions in a timely manner. This update came one day after an email was sent out to union members by the Public Service Alliance of Canada itself on April the 26th. It was titled, Strike Day 6, Some Reminders. If you do not yet have your PSAC ID, you should call, number listed. There are members on the other end of the line waiting to take your call. You may have to try several times, but this information is crucial in order for you to receive strike pay. Make this your priority, even if it ends up being the only thing you do as a strike duty for the day. It goes on to list how you log your hours and it stipulates that once you are done your four hours of strike related activity for the day, you can click the big button below and that's it. Look how easy they made it. You can click the same link for each day you are participating in strike activities. The bottom of the email goes on to include further directive and a way to create cool chants and songs for the picket lines and share them with your union friends on the lines and or in a linked private Facebook group. Look at that. It also includes a TikTok call to action, telling members to make TikTok videos about the union strikes, showing the amazing energy on the lines and in brackets, get your friends to send you videos from the line, because you might not be out there yourself, I guess, and or demystifying some of the right wing talking points. And then they confirm that they are asking a 4.5% raise for three years, not 30% that's being alleged. The average PSAC member, they say, makes between $40,000 and $60,000 a year, and they want to counter the critique that they are only getting a 35% turnout for their vote. They urge members to research the turnout for the last municipal and provincial elections in their area. They also say that they will give an apparent bonus, maybe that's a star or a hero cookie, for researching what percentage particular anti-union politicians were elected by. But this forty dollars to $60,000 per year is not entirely true. According to the Parliamentary Budget Officer in the April 4th Personnel Expenditure Analysis, the average cost of a full-time federal employee sat at $125,300 per year in 2021 and 2022 which was up 6.6% from the year prior. And that pay increase covers the salary, but also the pension overtime incurred by each individual employee. Furthermore, according to the Treasury Board of Canada Secretariat, the majority of full-time employees in the PSAC union earn between fifty dollars and $70,000 per year, and only 3% of those employees earn under $50,000. And let's never mind the hypocrisy of how the Justin Trudeau Liberals addressed these striking public sector employees versus how the same government treated everyday Canadians who wanted to make their own informed medical choices, as was the case with the trucker convoy that took to the nation's capital in early 2022, which was already pointed out by my colleague Sheila Gunn-Reed in a separate video. This public sector union went ahead and they shut down roadways, they blocked bridges, and caused delays, all while in active negotiations with the government. Something Trudeau refused to do with the truckers who wanted vaccine mandates revoked so that they could go on and continue earning an income. All for a cause so important that they couldn't even show up on evenings or weekends to shout about it, as pointed out by Canadian Taxpayer Federation founder Franco Terrazano, couple weeks ago. 
I suppose that's why when the feds threatened to dry up the taxpayer salary well by threatening the leave without pay, the strike pay being offered by the union will no longer be sufficient and they made sure to negotiate a deal before they risked being cut off from the taxpayer funded trough on May the 10th. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. The bloated bureaucracy is out of control and every year on April the 1st, it gets worse when Canadian members of Parliament give themselves a state-sanctioned raise. It's why we launched a petition and campaign at StopThePayHike.com. There you can call on Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Christia Freeland to stop this reoccurring pay hike as Canadian families struggle to heat their homes and feed their families. That's StopThePayHike.com.